than I expected. <laughs> I bought this yes a couple of days ago and it's a vacuum that you use to attach to your tools that sucks away all the dust and I've been wanting one for ages and it just arrived today and I thought why not open it together in the box well that's what we're going to find out i will show you <clears throat> i'm probably not going to do a tiktok today because i'm absolutely exhausted so your daily dose of diy is brought to you by this unboxing <laughs> i'm like a kid i feel like i'm like francis is with trains but with tools uh, that's a big claim, but I think it's true. Let's take this away. Alright, I've never seen one of these in person, so we're going to be experiencing this together. I think that you should tell me in the comments if you're a box keeper or not. When you get a new tool, do you keep the box? When you get a new phone, a new Mac laptop, do you keep the fancy box that comes with it? like this big. It's better that it's bigger because it'll obviously take more dust. Okay, instruction manuals. We all know that I'll be keeping those to add to my collection. It's the wrong way around. Oh, it's got a little handle. I don't keep my boxes, in case you wondered. I used to, for a little bit, I would keep them and discover that I just never, apart from sending it back to the manufacturer to get fixed, there was never any real need for it. <laughs> what tools have you got? Have you got the tools coming? Is that what you mean? Build in order. Yeah, this is what I got um, for the cells that I put up the other day in my video with ITS. This is what I got from... This is what I bought. Ooh. Okay, so it's, it has ability to be hardwired, which is handy. Although it also doesn't need to be, because this is where you can put the battery in. And the battery is the same across all of their products. And this is why I often go with DeWalt. Like, I find them fairly good anyway, but I like to keep it consistent because then all of your batteries just fit with the same tools. Always have tools coming, yeah, me too. There's always something in the post. That would be I have a terrible cold, so. That's why I'm doing this rather than making a video. 
Hey Jen, how are you doing? Just doing a little unboxing of my new toy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so how does this work then? So there's like a hose. Now I was hoping that this might fit onto the sander that I've got already. It is a lever, yeah. It's like, it's, I think it's, from memory, it's both wet and dry. So if you've got like wet stuff to vacuum, I don't think I've ever had wet stuff to vacuum up, but maybe that will happen for me now that it's in my life. Just manifesting it. Yeah, so not seen it in person before, so I'm just exploring it for the first time. It's got a little, that must be for the wet stuff. <laughs> So that must be what that's for. And then stick that on the end. Ah, there we go. Let's see if this connects to my sander. Wait there. This is my palm sander, also do well, of course. And what I was hoping is that it might connect to here. It wasn't very clear on the website that if it connected or not. So if it doesn't, I might be able to get like a connector or something. It looks like it might fit. Ah, oh, okay, and then that's locked. <laughs> I'm just entertained by the smallest things. That's so satisfying because if you've seen like any of the, like when I did the basement for example, I had to like attach my regular hoover and then tape it around and that is all sorts of problems because that's where like the air comes in for the hoover as well so that it seems to overheat so it's not ideal. Yeah, I do like DeWalt. Um, um, I've had other brands that I've quite liked, but they seem to do good stuff across the board. So it makes it hard not to stick with it. It's like being with Apple or Google, like once you're sucked in, you're in it for the long haul. But yeah, we got one of these. This is like a Hoover. I haven't used it yet, but it had good reviews. And it looks kind of cool. I'm trying to stop breaking my current vacuum. Let's see if this fits or if it needs a different battery. Hopefully not. Oh, that's so clever. <laughs> it literally works on a battery. My goodness, that's so exciting. I wonder how it turns on. I won't turn it on now because it'll be very loud. But I might take this battery out. <laughs> on Hoover 7. Yeah, that sounds about right. What brand do you, do you go for? Actual Hoover? Or have you got like a different, like Dyson or Shark? I tend to be Dyson, but I truly think like their older versions are a bit better. Like a bit more hard wearing. I've got one of their um, like kind of lightweight, smaller hoovers that you can go around the house with, but they're not really that good. Not a big fan. Let's see what's inside. Ooh. Okay. So it's like some sort of filter that can be washed. That's always handy. Don't yet know how that comes out. Looks like it should just turn, yeah. Oh, there we go. I don't know why I'm smelling it. Just smell things that don't have smells, just out of curiosity. And loads of space in there, so it must hold quite a lot. That'd be really good for holding wood shavings.
the smell test. Yeah, well, you've got to check because how do you know if it's a vacuum unless you've sniffed it? Obviously. G Tech for Normal Clean. I've never heard of that brand. Are they any good? Karcher, Kar I can never pronounce that, but I know, I know the brand. It's like they're also yellow, aren't they, in their branding? Um, I want to get one of their pressure washers. The one that I currently use is my my mum's. So I don't have it here all the time, but I always seem to find stuff to pressure wash. So I'd like to pick one up at some point. See what this does. All right, that comes off of there. So I guess that probably it's got a little code there, so there's like a open and closed options for this. And then you pop that one in, I guess, and then turn it. What do you think I should vacuum with it? of the sea. Also got one of those. Mm. I guess that's it. That's that's my new toy. I don't even have a use for it yet, but I'm quite excited to next time that I actually need to use my vacuum and I don't have to be worried about breaking it. <sighs> but I've got a cold and I'm bored at home, so what is everybody else doing? Feel free to share if you're feeling in the mood. either. Is that another brand? I need to get down on my brands. You're working. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I was just, um, well, I was gonna obviously take the day off, uh, but I still had some invoices to do and a little bit of, um, I had a video to produce that I promised by today. Um, but I needed to do some voiceover and it's quite hard to do like an authentic voiceover when you've got a cold because everything I say just sounds like like I'm about to die basically um so I had to go for a long walk and get some fresh air and you know get some of that you know vapo sticks or whatever they're called um just to be able to get a, a fresh head so I could actually do the voiceover but yeah I'm technically working right now Set your first alarms off today, sanding down your walls ready for fixing the plaster. As in, like, smoke alarms? Was it like, was it the dust? Was the dust coming out? Oh, fire. Mm. Yeah, I once was dusting my basement, and it's, you know, a really, really, it was a really gross place down there before I renovated it, and, uh, it was so dusty that my neighbours thought that their house was on fire because it came, it literally went through the wall into their basement and they were a little bit worried. You do wet and dry types and uprights. Oh, that's cool. I guess this is probably what this is modelled on. I've never had one that is wet before, uh, but I'm quite excited about that. I feel like it's the kind of thing that once you've got it, you'll find lots of uses for it all of a sudden. And you'll wonder what you did without it. Oh, happy Danny. This, like, a, a shop fact generally, or particularly the Dewalt one, because if it's this one in particular, I'd love to know what you think of it. If you hate it, I will burst into tears, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I won't. Getting it in shot. 
this one. Oh! Why do you go for this one? Is it? Do you have like the other Dewalt tools that you want to use the battery for? That's partly why I've gone for this one. And it was it was on offer when I picked it up, so I've sort of been tracking the price. Oh, okay, only fits in the Dewalt sander. I saw it in a picture attached to one of their circular saw models. Happy Hoover Day. Yeah, thank you for popping by on my spontaneous live to do this unboxing. Nice to see you as always. Does that mean that you have this palm sander as well? It's so messy. Look, that's, that's why I've been sanding down some plastered areas that are maybe a little bit too raised or something. Yeah, got the same system as me then. Let's go grab my coffee. Do you have anything else in the DeWalt range that you would recommend? There's a good chance that I've already got it, to be honest, but if there's any particular tool that I'm missing, I want to know about it. Oh, so nice. I'm living on caffeine today, just with it's crazy cold. Gonna do my nails. Would you like to have a look at my blinds to see how they've come out? They're absolutely terrible. <laughs> I just look. I just saw them again. It made me laugh. Thank you. Do you mean the uh, the sort of the paneling going up the stairs, the blue? I quite enjoyed doing that project actually, it was really good. So one of the things that I did that was really helpful was I got the strips cut for me at B&Q and other, other trades places might also do that but B&Q were just starting to trial cutting down the pieces for you they also do that as part of delivery as well so you could potentially phone up and just order it and say i want 10 strips that are two and a half inches each please send them here so i used mdf to do it and mdf is quite handy because it's quite bendy so you can if your wall isn't completely flat this will just allow it to sort of mold a bit more to the shape I kind of learnt that the hard way on my project where I had some old wood, like some solid wood pine that I wanted to use and it would have been fine but the wall wasn't straight and so when I tried to stick it on there um, there was just loads of gaps and then I ended up having to take it off and it pulled away loads of the plaster. Total DIY disaster. Do you have a mitre saw? Um, no, I don't have a mitre saw. It's on my list of stuff that I would love to get. Uh, on my secret tools list of stuff that I want to pick up one day. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think they seem really useful. So, yeah, I think so. I think it would be quite handy. Um, I think if people were just starting out, a jigsaw is always a useful thing to have because it's quite versatile and you can get through quite a lot. Uh, even a circular saw because they're a little bit cheaper. When you're deciding on your floor, do you mean the, the stairs going up, like what you're going to have on the stairs? For the, uh, is it cheaper as well? Are you meaning the MDF for the hallway? Um, yeah, MDF is generally going to be cheaper than you would get for a piece of solid wood for that size. 
Um, but generally wooden MDF is just a little bit more pricey generally at the moment just because of COVID. Um, so yeah, check the local prices and see what things are at the moment. Excuse me. Excuse me whilst I die over here. What else is on my list? Oh. I would love to have one of those table saws that have the saw stop, if that's what it's called, you know, that um, automatic stopping mechanism um, when it like encounters fingers. They always use a sausage in the ads. Um, I think they look really cool. I've always really wanted a table saw, uh, but they absolutely terrify me. Uh, and rightly so, because they are quite dangerous tools and uh, or can be dangerous if not used correctly. I'm sure they are fine if they're used appropriately, but they scare me. So I, if I was going to get a table saw, ideally I would want one that had that little bit of extra safety. I know they're really expensive. <laughs> been doing your stairs and hall for over a year. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that that's been helpful. Um, and I say that because I had that same situation in my office where I was building these cupboards and it was just going on and on and I was just so fed up of how long it was taking to do that uh, that's how my follow along project started because I just came on one day and I said, look, if you could do me a favour and hold me accountable, I'm just going to do like a teeny tiny bit every day, even if it's just one tiny thing, like maybe one bit of wood, uh, then I'm making like a little bit of progress. Um, and so then I would do like an update every day of what I'd done. Sometimes it would be a lot, sometimes it wouldn't be hardly anything. And yeah, that's how my follow along project started, all with that, uh, the cupboards in the office. So I'm really glad that you, you're finding it useful and it's inspiring you to get back in it. Ah, uh, sand, when sanding down ceilings. You're talking about this combo, aren't you? My new tool. <laughs> I saw the other day on a video, in fact, I think it was um, the Home Reno Vision, is that what it's called, with Jeff? He's a huge creator on, on, well, on TikTok, but also on uh, YouTube in particular. And he had this like round um, head on a stick that had sanding paper on it and he just used it to like sand the wall. And I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I was like, I want one of those. Hey Sophie, how are you doing? No taking up the parquet floor. I've already forgotten what that was in reference to. That's your next job. Oh, right, okay, just got to decide on the floor. Oh, parquet floor, nice. Are you taking, so are you, are you going to refurb the floor or you're not, just, are this, is that what you're trying to decide, like how to treat it? Would you recommend herringbone floor for lounge, hall and kitchen or just standard wooden? As in, in terms of the pattern, like herringbone versus like a regular slats of wood next to each other. Tell me if that's not your question, but if, if that is the question, I always think herringbone is really quite classy and quite, um, yeah, quite timeless. It seems to always be coming, always be coming back. I, I think it's a bit of a win. I like that idea. Some of you have been doing yours since June last year. Yeah, I feel that pain. There's some DIY jobs here that when I finally get around to them, take me five minutes. I'm like, that has been annoying me for years. Was that the, so yes, this, this was the unboxing. This is my, got myself a little present this month. It's a vacuum for, my, so it's like a shop vac. So you would keep it in your, I don't even have a shop. So I'm sort of just, you know, calling it something that it's not really, but. It was like a ball of the sawdust from anything that you connect it to. In particular, it connects to my Dewalt sander. Um, and it's also a dry and wet vac, which means that you can suck up things that are a bit wet. I've never used it like that before, so I 
don't know much about that. I probably should read the manual uh, before I use it. I think, um, Sophie, whatever, whatever feels like it matches with your style. I look at a lot of stuff on Pinterest to see sort of how stuff is finished. Um, and if like the overall design appeals to me, like some people think it looks a little bit too busy because it's all like, I think it's really nice. I think it's really classy doing herringbone. The Minton is underneath just a, we've talked about this before, haven't we? I'm just, I'm just now remembering, unless someone else happens to have exactly the same hallway situation, but there's like a parquet floor and then potential tiles underneath, which is like, how do you decide between those two? Do you know what it reminds me of? When archeologists are digging, for remain like uh, remains of history one of the things that makes their job difficult is how far to dig because if you go back this far you've got i don't know my, oh, my history is terrible and i'm about to expose it like the romans and then you might have something even older underneath and by going to further underneath you damage like the history of what's here so it's like how far do i go <laughs> like how far would be too far that sounds like what your problem is. It's uh, it's uh, tricky to know what to do about that. Yeah, my Dyson has gone through many filters. Um, I, it, I mean, to be honest, it's not a great vacuum anyway. But after discovering it wasn't a great vacuum, uh, I didn't treat it all that well. So because it was already just like broken after I'd used it once on a slightly dusty area. <laughs> I mean, I think, I feel like that shows my dedication to my interest in DIY is that I remember your parquet floor and Minton situation quicker than I remember your username, <laughs> which could well be my dyslexia, but um, yeah, like something about DIYs that uh, pique my interest uh, in such a way. Um, I feel like new people joining might want to see my new toy as it's now unboxed. Let's scroll up. Yeah, please do. I would love to know what you decide. Um, it's also a bit like when you have a house that has like maybe a pebble dash finish and you think, oh, should I paint it or should I try and remove it to see if like the brick is underneath and you don't know how well the brick is going to be contained when you take it off. So it's like, oh, I don't know what decision to make. Just deciding what I should do with my afternoon done my emails done my unboxing what a day who's doing up your house and selling them on your main job yeah i guess you would say that so i only have this current house like i don't have like a portfolio of properties um i must admit i would quite like that i'd love it if i could have one of the property that i could make nice to be able to sell on because not everybody wants or has the time or has the desire to renovate somewhere they just want it to look nice and be modern and have modern decor um but it's just this one at the moment and i will probably live here for another few years before i sell but i don't know never say never because i really like doing places up and it was uh so this is my second house and my first one i basically moved the second that it was finished <laughs> I was like, well, bored is bored now. Guess I'll move and find something new. And this place was an absolute tip when I moved it. It was really, really awful. But yeah, it's my main job. I do, well, I do content creation as my main job and influencer marketing and sometimes copywriting and sometimes other jobs that might help pay the bills. And at some point in the future, hopefully, YouTube uh, will allow me to generate a little bit of income. Yeah, every day, everyday job consists of um, 
So usually Mondays, it wasn't today because I've got a cold so I didn't leave the house, but usually on Mondays is my emails day and I go down to my local cafe and I'll sit there all day, I'll just reply to emails and that might be from people who want to collaborate on some content or want me want to send me some stuff that I could potentially review um, or yeah other types of partnerships um, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays are content creation days so I'll, I'll create lots of content for TikTok uh, or if I'm doing my follow along projects I usually create like a little bit of content every day because I show you like the daily progress of what I'm doing I do have a YouTube channel, yes. It's um, linked in my bio. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where the little button is, which has the Instagram sticker. We press on there, it also comes up with YouTube. It's also my link tree as well. So I sometimes get mixed up with, uh, there's another creator on YouTube who's a huge creator and does stuff focused on crafts and other types of DIY, so a similar sort of stuff, less to do with like house specifically, um, but they're called, I think it's Emma DIY, so sort of similar, if you search DIY with Emma they come up as part of the search term, so best to go through the links in my bio. What else do I do in a week? So Saturdays are my day off. Although, I'm not always that good at actually taking a day off. Um, and I also do the sort of influencer marketing content creation days. Thank you for the wave. Um, where I will just, I'll focus on producing the content that I might be doing for a company. So if we're they maybe like partnering on something together, I'll spend time like either with their product, learning how to use it, creating some like videography around it, trying to work out what I like about it and what might be helpful for you guys to know about it. Um, ah. I've actually got one, I've got a video coming out probably tomorrow uh, that people have been asking me for a later, uh, to how to use um, a laser for a little while. Uh, a level laser and uh, I really, really like the one that I've got so I'm excited about that video that's possibly coming out tomorrow subject to approvals I have to keep showing this when people join because it's like constant turnover people join for a couple of minutes and then they carry on now you want to see my Excuse me. Thank you, Tim. I'm glad about that. It makes me very happy to know that it's um, the stuff that I put out is helpful for people. So that's why I do it. Got to look up the castle and leave. I've got so many questions about that sentence. Uh, have a great rest of day. <laughs> and then, um, if your place really is a castle, we're going to need to talk about that the next time. So I'm quite excited about it. I hope you have a really great day. What is it? What is this? My new toy? <laughs> well, I'm glad that you asked. Um, it's basically a vacuum, a, a shop vac, what you would have in your workshop. Uh, a glorified vacuum, basically. But it connects to my sander, which makes me unbelievably happy. Oh, I'll break it before I use it. See, now I've got this down like a pro. I was learning how to do this whilst we were sat here, but now I've just got it down. Oh, you work in a castle. Okay, well that that makes sense, and that makes sense that you were at work. Oh, what a cool job, working in a castle. Okay, that connects. Don't need the sound effects, but you got them anyway. Oh, you've got the Makita one. Oh, that's cool. How do you like Makita? I'm, I'm basically trapped in DeWalt now uh, for the rest of my life because I've got so much of their products. But how's Makita? Do you like them? Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad that you find them accessible. That's so important to me. Um, probably more important than anything else. Like, this is supposed to be 
I believe, something that's taught in school so that everyone has the skills they need to look after their space. Um, so yeah, it's really important to me that people are actually able to access it. Something like this. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but TikTok have started doing this like live thing where you can join up with brands and talk about their product. And the whole thing just reminds me of like the 90s bid up TV and I find it really cringy. But now that I'm here, I totally feel that I could be sat here with Devot going, and this is their new vacuum. Look how amazing it is. It's yellow. Yeah, lots of people have said they prefer Makita to Devot because I've never tried it. I don't know what I'm missing, but because I'm totally sold now, I can't get out. Would DIY increase the value of a house? It depends what you're doing up. Um, because, like, it's definitely possible to overspend on a house and it not meet that same level of value. Like, it's not a, it's not a, a direct relationship, but it's certainly true that if you've got somewhere that needs to, say, have, like, the bathroom and kitchen done up, I think that doing spaces like that up that people feel like are really big jobs... Um, can increase the value more than the cost that you put out. Um, yeah, I mean, this this place, I did it very much to my own spec. Um, so I don't think that what I've put into it will have an equal... I mean, if it does have an equal increase in its value, it will very much be a match rather than a, oh, I've increased the value by 10%. <coughs> So yeah, it depends a little bit what you focus on. If you've only got like a limited budget, I would say focusing on like bathrooms and kitchens are usually always winners. Like the second fix nailer. Mm. I don't have a nailer at all yet. Um, the reason is I haven't yet looked up what first fix and second fix mean because they're still alien. I don't, I don't know. I guess one is to like initially secure it and then the next one is to make it more secure, if I was going to guess. You like your Makita impact driver? Yeah, I um, I think getting an impact driver, definitely a game changer. Uh, as in like, if you've already got a drill and you're looking to like expand, impact drivers just make things so much easier. Just like that screw goes directly in that wood and there's just no discussion about it. It's like, whoosh. It makes me very happy. No worries, Anna. Oh. Just deciding to be gross off camera because nobody needs to see that. So first fix is for large nails, and second fix is for panel pins. What are panel pins? Are they like... I've got something in my head, but I don't think I can describe it. So it's first fix where you would like say you're putting up some 2 by 4s building a stud wall, and you would just like nail those into place. I do have an impact driver. I've got DeWalt, which won't surprise you given the uh, situation. Um, yeah, I love it. I really like having an impact driver. Oh, okay, so first fix is for framing stud walls and second for your skirting. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I do, I want to get some sort of nail gun at some point. That's definitely, that's another thing missing from my toolbox. Someone was asking earlier about what is, what else is on my secret list of tools that I want to get at some point. Hmm. That's good about the Makita. Do you mean that like in comparison to a regular combi drill or just overall, like in the drills that you've used brand wise, it just feels more powerful? Milwaukee all the way. Are we, are we going to start a fight in the comments? <laughs> I, like, I like the idea that everyone like comes in and it's like, ah, uh, but have you considered Bosch? Um, I mean, that's ridiculous because I don't think anyone's ever said that about Bosch. Uh, sorry, Bosch. 
But um, when people are fighting about brands, I don't think they just they just don't seem to bring up Bosch very often. In comparison to Dior, yeah, yeah, I've got no doubt. I almost don't want to try other tools because if I can see what I'm missing, I think I'll be devastated. I've never tried uh, Milwaukee either. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But I've heard they're also good. Um, people swear by them. I feel like DeWalt is like a good, slightly more budget version. I think they seem to be just slightly cheaper. How did you start wearing the superhero outfits? That's a great question. So around the time that I was just about to reach 50,000 followers, uh, was at the same time that I was about to get a million likes as well. So there was kind of two milestones coming up and I said, let's, for fun, if we get to 50K first, I'll be this superhero for the rest of my project. And if we reach this other like milestone first, I'll be this other superhero. Um, and so it was kind of just like a way of just celebrating there being so many of us because it was it's it's just so rewarding that there's so many people enjoying DIY like it brings me a lot of joy, and so it was just a way of celebrating. And then uh, by the time that project finished, we were just about at 100k, and so I said, well, okay, so to celebrate 100k, I'll be this character, and now it's just kind of like my thing. Um, and I realised that I save all of my nice clothes from getting damaged um, because I wear these outfits. And uh, it just it just makes the whole thing more fun. And I know lots of young people that follow me on here and they find that uh, an enjoyable part about watching it. Like watching Spider-Man do DIY makes it quite like a fun experience for them. So yeah, I've now just, uh, it's just become my thing. I'm... The DIY hero. Yeah. The uh, the tool preference is uh, yeah, like whatever people like. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of it's kind of silly, but it's super fun at the same time. Uh, I actually sometimes post some of my content on uh, LinkedIn because I, you know, left my corporate job about this time last year. It's almost coming up to a year, actually. It'll be a year in March that I've been doing this full time for. And so sometimes I produce content or I share content on there from my page if I think it's relevant to work or other or, you know, stuff like that. And I recently shared the one of me um, in all the different costumes um, and people on there loved it as well. <laughs> they were like, what do you say so you were doing a corporate job and now you're dressed up as superheroes? And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. That's just what happened. It happened by accident. So yeah, you can never plan for these sorts of things. Life's a bit weird. Mm. What time is it? It is 20 past five. Well, I've got uh, a couple more emails I've got to send. And obviously I've now finished the unboxing of my tool, my new toy. And I have to stop procrastinating and go and answer some emails. And also because I've got a cold at some point, I can tell that I'm going to burst into a coughing fit and that won't be funny, fun, fun or funny for anyone. Um, any update on the dungarees so I haven't done much research into dungarees except that there's certain suppliers that do um drop ship like is it yeah it's drop shipping because you don't get the, the stock uh but they also do printing and embroidery because I like the idea of having some dungarees that are personalized in some way that people like there's like a certain logo or something um but a lot of those companies don't tend to do dungarees for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they're just not that popular. Um, yeah, it's still on my it's still on my list. I think what I'll probably do is properly launch my YouTube first, as that's kind of the thing that's uh, first at the at the forefront of my mind. Because as soon as I can 
get to a point of monetizing that it makes sharing content on that platform a little bit easier um a little bit more worthwhile so i'm going to focus on youtube first and then i'll look into other sort of more passion projects like perhaps making the dungarees yeah i would love to do that i'd love to have time to do that that sounds so nice mm. um before i before i go because i will have to go and do these emails um I will just show you my blinds before I do because they're so bad. They're so bad. Uh, you can also get a nice picture of the sunset as I turn this around. <coughs> can you see that? Let me pull this up a little bit. <laughs> oh man, they're so bad. <laughs> It's fine. It's it's completely fixable. I just um, I just think it's so funny how badly they came out. <laughs> and look at that sunset. This is what I have every evening out of this window. Let me bring you closer. You deserve to see this. Check that out. It's oh. nice. That makes me happy as well. Team Emma, yes. Team Emma with the dungarees. Well, I'm I'm gonna go. Well, thanks for the chat and joining me whilst I did some unboxing. As my little DIY for the day, since I'm not gonna do a video for today because I'm too sick. And um, I'm gonna go and do these emails that I've been putting off. But thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time.